بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عما يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتاتا وخلقناكم أزوادا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وجعلنا الليل Buy a share of land in Asham for our continuing safe haven project. Thanks to SKT Welfare's kind donors, we have already relocated over 1,500 displaced families, moving them from their single, fragile tents in crowded refugee camps to nearby, secure, earthquake-resistant, solidly built safe haven homes located in safe, mutually supportive communities. It's a great success story. Four safe haven villages are already built and thriving and we are planning our fifth village now. But we are dependent on the generosity of our donors for the purchase of new land to be built upon. You can buy a share of land in Asham for £4,000 or two shares for £8,000 or just half a share for £2,000. New land in Asham will provide the foundation to build more safe haven homes for our displaced and struggling brothers and sisters, providing a better base from which to rebuild their lives and to help in turn their children and generations to come. This Ramadan, buy a share in Asham with SKT Welfare. The Prophet وسلم, he said that when a person wakes up in the morning, every day two angels are sent to that person. One angel says, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. The other one says, Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. O oh Allah, give to the one who gives, and O oh Allah, withhold from the one who withholds. Okay? So Imam Siraj uh, said very beautifully, he said that there is a book, uh, a record book right now. The angels are recording those amounts. It's not just the people putting them, then, them into the Excel sheets or uh, documenting the numbers themselves. And he said, when your name is there, do you want there to be a zero next to your name or do you want there to be something else, right? So this idea of never allowing there to be a zero next to your name when it comes to sadaqa. Now, this hadith about the two angels descending and saying, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa, Allahumma a'ti mumsikan salafa, O Allah, give to the one who gives and withhold from the one who withholds. This is obviously in accordance with your capacity. But there's another hadith in Ibn Hibban, which is a beautiful visual uh, to take with this. The Prophet ﷺ said that verily there is an angel at one of the gates of paradise that is holding on to that gate of Jannah and saying, Man yuqrid al yawm yudza ghadan. Man yuqrid al yawm yudza ghadan. Whoever gives a beautiful loan today will be given a beautiful reward tomorrow. Whoever gives a beautiful loan today will be given a beautiful reward tomorrow. And as he's hanging on to the gates of Al Jannah, what he means is that paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for the believers and promised as a reward for generosity. And the Prophet said that on another gate of Jannah, there's an angel saying, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa, Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. O oh Allah, give to the one who gives, and O oh Allah, withhold from the one who withholds. This is also in a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that there was a man that was walking one day and as he was walking, he heard this voice from the clouds that said, Asti hadiqata fulan, irrigate the garden of so-and-so, water the garden of so-and-so. And so the Prophet ﷺ said this man looked up and he saw the clouds form and then suddenly it started to pour rain and the rain came on this stony surface and then it perfectly formed into a channel that flowed directly into this garden. So he followed where the water was going and he saw that it was going perfectly into this man's garden. And he saw the man that was then distributing the water across his garden. And he asked the man, you know, what his story was without telling him what he had just seen. And the man was a little apprehensive because he didn't want to tell him what his story was. He was curious why he was being asked. And then that man said that I saw the clouds form and I heard a voice from the sky that said, water the garden of so-and-so. So, -and -so. so that's Syria, why I Turkey came to border, you. It's and cold. subhanAllah, that man responded, he said, everything that I earn, I cut it into, th into threes. So I have one third that is for my family, one third that I invest, and one third that I give in charity. And that's how I 
allocate all of my wealth. One third for my family, one third I invest, and one third that goes to Sadaqa. So this is a dif- divine equation for good in our lives. Now, what, I, what I'd want for you to take from this, beyond just the angels and things of that sort, charity should be a daily habit. Don't wait for the fundraisers. Don't wait for somebody to invite you to Jannah, right? This is your place. This is your reward. This is something between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is especially true when people are not attending the fundraisers that they typically would because of their circumstances, right? This is particularly true now that you push yourself and you don't hesitate and charity becomes due upon you every single day, even if it's a small amount. One of the things that uh, my, my parents uh, did, may Allah have mercy on my mother and preserve my father. We used to have, uh, for one of the charities, Ubat uh, al-Sahra, the Dome of the Rock, and the dome would come off and we would put some charity in there every single day. And so whether it's a dollar that you put in a day or you put in a coin a day, then it was just to get everyone in the habit of putting in something, a penny, a nickel, something every single day that goes towards sadaqah. And then at the end of the month, we'd give it away in charity. And so even when you're thinking about your families, if you've taken a course with me before, even if you take like a two liter bottle and call it our Jannah bottle and teach your family that, look, every single day, we're going to give something in sadaqah. Because if I could find the most righteous person in the world and say, hey, I want you to make dua for my my well-being every single day. If I had that moment to find the most righteous person in the world and say, hey, I want you to remember me every single day and ask Allah to give me, then all of us would take that opportunity. But here you have an opportunity that the Prophet is saying where you could have an angel literally holding on to the gates of Al-Jannah, praying for you, making dua for you to be rewarded with that.